Alright, so this is going to be a tutorial for a flag with Smartbone 1. Since Smartbone 2 isn't ready for release yet, but I will make a tutorial on that also whenever it's out. But before I start anything, I need to say that, as mentioned by a developer on Smartbone 2, on my Discord server, which you should totally join by the way, the link is going to be in the description, but anyway. Basically, Smartbone shouldn't be used for a flag unless the flag isn't going to be a static object, which is going to be moving or is going to be on a vehicle and the player might be holding it. If it's going to be standing in place, it's better to use Windshake for that. So if any of you want to see that also, you can leave a comment down below. But anyways, let's get to working on the flag now. And the process is going to be really similar to the, to the cloth tutorial that I've made previously. So we add a plane, just scale it on the Y. Add few loop cuts. And then go to the Sculpting tab. Here you want to select the cloth brush right here on the side and enable Dino Topo and also select Smooth Shading in Dino Topo 2 and then set the strength of the brush to be 1-0 and then just give it a little bit of a flow oh and it's not shading smoothly so we need to go into the edit mode and then go back right so we can have a little bit of a flow like this and this should just be enough. So we go back to the modeling, exit from the edit mode, and now we need to add an armature to the flag. So I do shift A and then just select the armature right here, and this bone will appear. So now we need to go to the bone properties, and we have the name of the bone right here, we can name this one root, since this is going to be the root bone. And now we move it to the side whenever you want the flag to be basically touching the pole, in my case it's going to be on the left. Then we need to rotate the bone on minus 90 on X and we can scale it down a little bit. So now when having this part here selected, we need to extrude this bone towards the center so it's overlapping a bit on the flag. So to like right there. And we need to do that on three layers. Of course, the more bones you have, the more performance heavy it's going to be. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to do few. So we have something like this and later on, we'll have it so these three bones won't be affected by smart bone. I will be adding an anchor depth attribute, which will disable the simulation for these three bones. Now you can select all of these points and just keep extruding the bones on the flag. We can do it three or four times, depending on how much detail you want to have. But we basically do this. Right, I can move these three a little bit backwards. So now we need to attach the armature to the plane. So we select the plane and you need to do this in this order, otherwise you won't have the ability to parent it. So we select the plane first, then the armature while holding shift and then click Ctrl P. This will open the parent menu. If you select the armature first and then the cloth, you won't have the options to parent them with the armature deform. And in the armature deform, you want to select the automatic weights option like so, and this part would also be the part whenever you would animate the flag instead of applying smartphone to it if you wanted to, because if it's skinned like this, you can just make an animation for it and, and just loop the animation. But continuing, then we need to select the cloth and go to the weight paint mode, right here. Now on the right side we want to go to the object properties, right here, and these vertex groups, as you can see we have this bone selected, and you can see the weight of this bone on our mesh. What we want to do is select these three bones, right here, after the starting ones, and remove any high weight from the left side on the center, so this root one is this bone right here, this one isn't going to be moving anyway, so you can leave it, but this one, we don't want to have it affect this area right here, because it's just going to look weird, if the pole was right there the flag would be moving all around it, and we don't want that. So we set the weight to zero. You can do so by pressing right click and just remove all of it right here. Like so, so it doesn't have too much influence. And then you can just smear it back a bit. And just do a little bit of a correction. Now we want to repeat the process for the top and bottom bones. So this one would be the bone root 05. And this one can have a little bit of influence right there. Now the same for bone 06. Like so. And this should be everything for the weight paint. Now we need to exit the weight paint. So we go back to the object mode. And now we need to export it. 
and we need to do it again by pressing the mesh, then the armature, then going to file, export and select the FBX. I'm going to name this one flag. And in the settings, we want to do selected objects, change the scale to 0.05 and then change forward to Z, then apply transforms. In the geometry, we want to apply modifiers if we have any. And in the armature, we want to only deform bones and don't add leaf bones. So we deselect this one and we don't have any animations, so we can deselect the bake animations too. And then we just export it. Now, when we are in studio we need to go into the home tab and select the import 3d right here then select our flag and here you should be able to see that it has an armature right there and the armature should look something like this i don't need to add the model to my inventory so i can deselect this option and just import and we have our flag right there. And whenever it's a model, we want to make it a little bit smaller so you can go to scale and set it to 0.2 maybe. That's a bit too small, so 0.3. So it's like this. Delete initial poses because we don't have any poses or animations. So, so we can also delete the animation controller. I'm just gonna move it a bit back and anchor it. And now we can also add a part. Then go down in the properties and change the shape to cylinder. Let's also anchor it and rotate it like so. Then scale it down, so we are going to have a pole like this, and I'm gonna change it to wood and give it a wooden texture. Maybe also disable the material. I can name this one pole. This is a reference for people in my Discord server. And right now we need to select the pole and go to the C-frame property, copy its position, and paste the position inside of the flag's position. Right, and now we need to see where is the beginning of our flag, so it's going to be right there. So we need to move it like so. So it's on the pole like this. And now we need to change it to a smart bone object. So we can select the plane, go down to the tags and add a smart bone tag. Then add an attribute, name this one roots and leave it as a string attribute. In the roots attribute, we need to put in the names of every root bone we have. So this one is just going to be root. I can paste it in right here. And then that should be everything. Yep, it's loaded right now and we just need to make few adjustments. First thing would be to make it double-sided because you can see it from this side. First thing we need to change is the anchor depth. So add an attribute called anchor depth and this is a number attribute. We save this one. This is the thing I was talking about with the bones. We don't want these three bones right here to move. So we need to add an anchor depth of one. And smart bone also has wind settings. You have wind speed of 8, strength of 1 and influence of 1. We want to add more wind influence to the flag. So go back to the attributes again, add a wind influence attribute, leave it as a number and change it to maybe like 5. So now the flag should look like this, right? It behaves a little bit more like a flag, but there are also different settings that we can add. And the default settings work pretty good with it. But if we, let's say, wanted to make the effect stronger, we can add an elasticity attribute with the type of a number and change it to 0.3, let's say, since the default is 0.5, right? So now it looks like this, basically. But as it was recommended previously to not use smart on a static object, I can also show you by making this flag a tool, how it behaves whenever it's moved. So I can add a tool, name it flag, put the flag model in there and then just ungroup it. Then duplicate the pole, make it smaller and this one will be the handle. So we name this one handle, then make sure everything is unanchored and set to can't collide. So we disable the collision right here and I'm just going to weld everything together with a plugin like so and also make sure the handle is transparent right so now we can put this flag into the starter pack and then there is a thing with smart bone where if it's applied to a tool mesh it's not going to load properly because it's not in the workspace and and this instance in the backpack is going to be loaded faster than the script having the instance added to the tag signal so we go to the plane and remove the smart bone tag from here then add a local script and again this is only for showcase so don't actually do this from a tool right we do tool set it to script that parent then have the flag mesh which is tool wait for child plane and we also need collection service which is game get service collection service and then let's say after maybe five seconds we do collection service add tag the instance is the flag mesh and the tag is a smart bone all right so now when we wait it should be loaded 
and this smartphone should be used on a moving flag like this but we would need to mess around with some settings because you can see how wobbly it is we change the elasticity to 0.6 then add an inertia attribute which is how much of the object's movement is going to be ignored. The default is 0, so I can change it to 0.4, let's say, and then just hit play. All right, so now when our flag loads, it's going to be like this. And this already, you can see that it has a better effect, and this should be generally used for this purpose. It's also kind of wobbly because our character doesn't have an animation of holding the tool, so it's going to be jumping around like this. But yeah, you get the idea, right? So that's going to be everything for this tutorial then. So yeah, join the Discord, and also check out the announcement video because I talk about channel memberships there too. But anyway, I hope you guys had a nice day and see ya!